Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. TGIF, it's Friday, and that means we have less than a week before the clamp challenge. July 3rd it's due, so if you haven't started painting yet, you better get your uh, your butt moving. Um, I'm here with Kenji the Wonder Cat, as you can see. She's not very patriotic, the flag tends to scare her. But anyway, um, I got a uh, great video planned today because uh, Mr. Pete contacted me if you don't know who he is you've been under a rock and we're gonna straighten that out right now so let's go downstairs and talk about okay it. real quickly um mr pete is a, a youtube creator who uh, anybody who ha has any kind of mechanical interest has to know who mr pete is and uh if you don't know who he is i'll have a link in the description you have to go check out his channel he's a uh, retired shop teacher and uh, he is a fantastic presentator and instructor. And he has taught so many of us all the skills, a lot of different skills that you see here. They're just rehashed <laughs> Mr. Pete videos. So uh, we all have so much to owe to him, you know, not just the students that he used to teach, but anybody on YouTube that's ever seen uh, any of his videos. And you will enjoy his videos, uh, trust me. But, um, What's so great is Mr. Pete's big time, you know, we're, we're the small guys here. It's me, Joe, Noel, you know, we're all small guys here that, you know, do these videos and, and, uh, and we enjoy it and we enjoy the camaraderie and things like that. But the big guys, you know, the Mr. Pete and the, the Tom Lipton and all, and A-Bomb, those are the big guys, you know? So, um, what happened was Mr. Pete I was watching one of his videos and he mentioned me on one of his videos and, and I was shocked, you know, to even see my name pop up. I've been subscribed to him for for 10 years and now all of a sudden I see my name so pop up. So the reason Mr. Pete mentioned me was he was uh, he bought a, a, a lot. He, he gets some of these auctions. He gets really good deals and he picked up this one tool and he might have seen maybe one or two of my tool restorations and and he, he said, uh, I would like to send this to me, you know, which I was uh, enamored. I was like, I'd love to restore it for you. But he sent me this box, and let me show you what it is. So I get this box in the mail from Mr. P. We contacted, he contacted me on email. He says, I got a drill I'd like to send you. I was like, I'm so happy. I would love to do it. And he says, I don't want it back. He says, I got too much stuff. So I was, I, I'm like, wow. I said, this is going to be something. I saw this in the video. And look at this, the Craftsman's 50 style drill. We'll take a closer look at that. But then he sent two other, uh, like a push drill here two of them uh and and these are just beautiful models so let's take a close look now at i hope you apologize for the gloves but the poison ivy is in the bad stage of of how it looks okay here so here are the drills and you can see here the condition it's in uh these drills these uh this one here obviously a regular hand drill to craftsman and it's a beautiful drill uh what the only issue it really has is it has a slight crack on the cap but we'll straighten that out and um it's just lovely, isn't it? Just it's you know it has some gunk and, and things like that. We're gonna try and get into this, get this one real nice, and then these two, believe it or not, these two are are easy cleanups. Uh, you know what happens when the the plastic starts to get that haze to it, but you know it needs a little bit of a little bit of love and tender care, TLC. And this one here, it's in a Craftsman. This had like a fiber type handle, like almost then. Uh, we'll get these, we'll get these real nice. So let's get started real quick. Okay, I'd like to thank all my sponsors. <laughs> Obviously, I'm kidding. Um, okay, first thing I did, goop. I love this stuff, right? I wiped everything down. You get all the dirt and everything off of the, uh, the product with goop and uh, that gets it nice and clean and then I went over with some wet dry 320 sandpaper and got off all the residual you know staining things like that we're not even close to being finished but it, you can see it looks pretty good so far now we're gonna go through my micro pad uh, sanding these are sanding pads that are attached and they're waterproof and it goes from a fairly coarse all the way down to like 24 thousand grit you know it feels like there's no grit on there whatsoever but that'll take it to a pretty and i get off any scratches and then we will hit it with some mcguire's plastics i i like this stuff this stuff is a plastic polish and it does a nice job then for this area here you know we'll take out any little scratches we can and then we'll go over it with this this stuff is fantastic if you could find this bush aluminum polish 
ah, this stuff works so great on aluminum. It's amazing. But any kind of polish is going to do the same thing. But and uh, and then we'll work on the bits. But let's get to the handle. Finish the handle. Here are the bits that were in the drill, and you could see um, for the most part they're in nice shape. But there were a couple here that need some uh, some cleaning up. So we'll do that on the wire brush, and then we'll hit it with a. Uh, just a little bit of polish just to keep them from rusting up again. Okay, now I always get a kick out of this. You see how this paint has splattered on here from, you know, a job that was done. Now, the funny thing is, if you were to paint this and wanted to keep the paint on there, it would chip off, flake off. Whenever it gets splattered by mistake, that stuff is semi-permanent. So I always get a kick out of that. That is so hard to get off there. Meanwhile, if you tried to put it on, it would uh, flake off in okay, a day. Okay, now, uh, where we got all the white stuff removed. We polish this. I see how nice and smooth it is on the outside, but it's not really transparent. It's kind of translucent because of the inside. There's scratches on the inside. And uh, here's a novel way I found to... Uh, to get to the inside of that to polish it out, just take an old piece of rod. This is an old piece of hanger and uh, place it on. You take a piece of masking tape, put it on some paper towel and uh, just place this on here like that. Roll it over just like this and then continue to roll it like this. And then when you roll it up like this, you chuck this in your drill and you'll have a nice little pad you can get in there. And I'll show you how that works. Now here are the bits for this drill and you can see a little different but they're uh, similar bits they just need a little work let's get to that okay the bits are all cleaned up ready to go back in the handle they look pretty okay, good okay the other two are done we're starting on the third one now take remember take a good look at this we have a, a little bit of work cut out for us you know but uh, this is such a pretty drill. I'm really psyched. Let's get started by stripping it down, getting that paint off. Okay, using a hand wire brush and, uh, and obviously some elbow grease and the paint stripper, we got all the paint off of there. Now, uh, you can see here, this is most likely aluminum. And you can see the casting here. It's, it's a very simple uh, drill. There's not much to it. But uh, it's in very good shape, except, you know, now you see all these little dings and, and see, that's why a lot of times old tool companies paint the tools, because it was much easier to paint a tool like this than it was to try and polish it out. I mean, that took hours where to paint it took, you know, 10 minutes, especially powder coating or something like that. Today, you can get a really nice, durable finish. But um, and the paint also. It takes see that's all like you know forging casting marks and things like that and the paint fills all those in and looks nice so but we want to take this to I think where Mr. Pete would want it and polish it out so we're gonna have to do a lot of hand sanding because there's no areas that we can use on the belt sand or anything it's got to be all hand sanded so let's okay get here we are after an hour and 45 minutes worth of hand sanding and you can see we're trying to get out all them little pits using uh, different abrasives Try and get down, and uh, it takes a toll. <laughs> now, you know my favorite part. Remember what these three drills look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. This tribute to Mr. Pete, and a special appreciation for him for sending this over to the channel. And uh, I'm really happy with the way this came out. I made a... Uh, couple mistakes as we always do we learn from our restoration one mistake was uh with this beauty look how nice this came out huh uh the problem is uh I, when i was doing it i took off there was a craftsman logo it was hot stamped and i took off the c so i said okay no problem i could fix the c i brought it upstairs i was going to do it upstairs under the microscope so i wiped it down with alcohol so it would absorb <laughs> the alcohol took off the rest of the lettering so I made a goof up there, but uh, other than that, it's just, I mean, look at the cap on this, huh? 
and the bits and everything just perfect what a what a nice little uh push screwdriver push drill and just just really nice craftsman made it has this you know a, a hex nut down here which you don't usually see uh just really nice happy with this uh this one here you can see here we have uh the paint came out real nice repainted that um did that in a regal red uh, the polish came out here. Uh, again, can't get these scratches totally out from the inside. But look what we did on the cap. Filled in uh, the Yankee Handyman with uh, red paint. And again, work, they all work beautiful, you know. They're just a beautiful. This one here has a ratcheting, you know, in and out. And uh, just again, real nice, real smooth how this works. Let me show you the inside here. Took out the... You know, cleaned up all the bits. This has the screwdriver and everything inside out. Everything's all oiled up, cleaned up, and it works just like uh, like it was new. And then, of course, the whole reason this uh, started was for this one. Let's check that. Okay, what we did with this model is um, instead of trying to repaint it, you know, it was done in a uh, silver. And uh, what we did was we polished it down to uh, to an aluminum. And then with the lines here, obviously we filled it in with red paint here and then red and black alternating for the rings. And then a little red on the chuck here. This is a Jacob's chuck and everything runs nice and smooth. You know, it always has that telltale, but it's all re-greased, re-lubricated. Just a beautiful little drill. And it's such a classic Art Deco looking drill. This cap is, uh, I believe it's a Bakelite. I put it on the lathe, turned it down because there was some gouges. Turned it down a little bit just to get out all those gouges. Uh, it had a little crack in the, in the threads that I couldn't repair because there was no material. But um, I have another one coming, another cap. But uh, it looks really good, doesn't it? It's just a beautiful drill. And uh, I think this is just what Mr. Pete would have wanted as far as the way it looks and the way it operates. You know, it's just uh, silky smooth and it looks so nice. You know, it's uh, it's down to a pretty much a mirror polish all the way around. Really enjoyed this project and uh, this was a, a fun uh, drill to work on as far as drills So in go. closing, I just want to say a special thanks to Mr. Pete for uh, not only for the tools, but for being an inspiration and providing all that uh, valuable education to me and to 200 plus thousand other people who are subscribed to his channel. And uh, if you aren't subscribed or you haven't seen Mr. Pete, please go to the link, check out a couple of his videos. And, uh, and again, thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you, Mr. Pete. I hope you all have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.